Good morning, guys. Today is Friday, so I've got a horrible cold, so I had a day off yesterday, an impromptu day off. Um, I'm now going to go for just an 8k run, just to see how I feel. Nose is still a bit bunged up, but um, I'm not really going to know how I feel until I go out for a run. So, yeah, I'm just going to do 5 miles. I might add in a 5-10 minute tempo, depending on how I feel, just to shake the legs out a bit, because I didn't do too much... I haven't done too much like faster stuff this week. I just really want to shake them out, get them um, moving again. Um, yeah, so I'm not really going to do any filming. But then when we come back, we're going to have a little review about my race on Sunday, the Brighton Half Marathon. So we're going to have a little talk about that. So guys, just before I go, I am wearing, obviously, a standard hat, but I've been sent some lovely gear by Say Sky. So I'm trying this all out today. So on the socks, I've got these Say Sky. Um, I'm obviously not running in these. Um, these Say Sky um, kind of long cargo socks is what they're called. Um, I've got Say Sky half tights. These are a favorite of Ben is running. So um excited to see how I feel with these because I know that he really appreciates them. This super lightweight jacket. And then this lovely long sleeve top underneath. So hopefully it's going to keep me warm. It's freezing outside. Um, there's ice on my car. So yeah, let's get into this. Hey guys, so I'm back from my run. Absolutely loved um, the jacket. The half tights are super comfortable. Um, Long sleeve because it was under the jacket. I didn't really notice, but I was lovely and warm. Um, didn't get didn't get too hot. Didn't get cold. The one thing I would say, and you know me, I've got to be honest, is the socks. Really comfortable. Nothing problem with the uh, with the comfort, but the durability of them is just not fantastic. I don't know if you can see that they've already kind of started to fray. Um, so I wore my Alpha Flies, um, just you know, save the legs a little bit, and. Um, so they're like they're nice and clean inside. They haven't got any mud or anything extra that could have potentially caused this. Um, I just don't think the socks have got fantastic durability. Um, but the other stuff, I absolutely loved it. Um, and yeah, can't can't fault the other stuff. So we are gonna take a little look at my race um, on this Sunday, the Brighton Half Marathon. So I'll put a picture of the course up on the screen now so you guys can see so it's a pretty simple course by the looks of things i don't know if you guys can see um from the start um from the picture i've put up on screen but the start line um is kind of the bottom right area and then we're going to run two miles out along the coast to turn around and then run another two miles back and then we go kind of a bit into the town centre a little bit just for a, just for a mile by the looks of things and then it's all the way along the seafront and back again so it's a pretty straightforward course um there's not too many turns that you would expect over a half marathon so um it looks like it could be quick in that respect the weather looks pretty decent from what i've seen um so let's just have a look i think it's about 10 mile an hour winds um and that's you can't you can't be upset about that unfortunately um so yeah about the so race starts at nine and it says it's 11 um mile an hour winds which at the coast that's as good as you're gonna get so looking really good from that perspective i haven't been able to find a um elevation map um so I'm not really sure if there's any hills or anything like that. Um, I know that I've been told there's a hill at the start and the finish. Um, so we'll have to see. Okay, so the elevation map is actually pretty poor. Um, in terms of there's no elevation by the looks of things. Uh, if I go feet, then it will exaggerate it a bit more. Yeah, so... It's a little bit undulating, but we're not talking anything major here whatsoever. So it looks like it's really quick. Um, so guys, we start off at um, 49 feet. The highest point it goes up to is 85 feet above sea level. And then the lowest point it goes down to is 
um, zero feet. So you're talking like plus 40 feet, minus 40 feet in terms of elevation, gain and loss. So it's really nothing, nothing much. Um, I think the total climb is 360 feet. So you're talking 100 meters. So it's not fantastic, but I do more than that on my long runs. So hopefully I shouldn't feel it too much. Um, and it's roughly about six meters up per kilometer. Um, so we shall see. I don't know. It might be on the day. It might feel really hilly. But yeah, only time will tell, I guess. One thing I do want to just quickly look at before we close off today's vlog. And that is just looking at the past winning times. I'm not saying for any um, second that I'm, ho I'm going into this hoping to win. But it'd be interesting just to see what sort of times have been um, uh, ran. So we'll just open the results in the past four years. 2021 back to 2018. So the winner in 2018 was Paul Pollock and he ran 66.57. Pretty rapid. And then... 2019 uh, Paul Pollock came second but the winner was uh, Paul Navasi and he ran 6456 in 2020 the winning time was 6905 so a little bit of a slower one I, I feel like I could have could have won but you don't know on the, on that day what the conditions were like and then 2021 Paul Navasi won again and that was in 68 and 10 seconds so it looks like it's going to be quite a competitive field looks like there's always kind of at least six guys going sub 70 so it's going to be really interesting to see. I know obviously Marshall is doing it, my, my nemesis. So we'll see if we can if we can hold on to him. Um, and yeah, so my goals for this race, the A goal would be a sub 68. And then a, so it's like a 67 something. B goal would be a sub 69. And then a C goal would be sub 70. So I don't see any reason why I shouldn't PB unless the cold really hits me bad on the day. Um... But yeah, that's what I'm going into it with. Quite an open mind, but yeah, I'm looking looking forward to it. And it's I, I love road racing. That's just what that's what I love to do. So it's just gonna be really exciting to get back on the roads with some really good runners and a big mass participation event, about eight thousand people, I believe. So yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you, Say Sky, again for sending me this kit. Um, really enjoyed running it today and I'm sure some of it will feature maybe my half marathon on Sunday maybe the half tights we'll see if I can get it washed in time so guys um, unexpectedly we're not going to end the vlog just yet so I've received a really cool package um, I've already opened it because I didn't know what it was um, but here it is I've received a Coros Pace 2 watch Really excited. Um, it's a premium sports watch. Got it on now. Tell you, th tell you what, first thing I would say is it's so light. So um, I'm just going to take it off for you guys and show you. I've already set it up. A um, bit of a nerd like that. I just got really excited and set it all up. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I've had my Garmin 4Runner 645 for the last four or five years. And it's, and it's done me good. The battery is shot. The GPS goes a bit dodgy sometimes. Um, so Coros have kindly sent me a Coros Pace 2 watch to trial and review. Um, but I've said to them that it's going to be completely honest. I'm not going to fake my review because I've been sent this for free. Um, and I'm not being paid by them to give my review. Um, so it is basically just whatever I, whatever I feel about this watch is what I'm going to tell you guys. It's not going to be fake. Um, and you guys know me. I want to give you the honest reviews. So, obviously, I haven't worn, uh, haven't worn this for a run yet because I've already run today. I ran this morning, and that was in my Garmin. Um, the Garmin is four years old, so it's understandable that it's um it's a bit bit heavier. It wouldn't affect your running at all. Just when you when you got them in your hand, it does feel a bit lighter. The Coros one, um, but straight off the bat, I would say the interface doesn't look as nice. But there's a lot more going on in terms of, um, kind of what do you call it? Um, stats and data so just a just a quick comparison i'll probably make a whole video on this at some point so my garmin does the time heart rate uh, my training status my steps my stress levels um and then i can add other things like the weather and things like that and the chorus and this is before i've changed anything um it's got um like the sun uh, the sun time so when it's noon sunrise sunset that stuff 
the temperature outside, the HPA, which I'm not really sure what that is, if I'm honest. Um, oh, I think it might be humidity levels. So the humidity levels outside. I might be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, my elevation, which is pretty cool. So I'm 152 meters above sea level right now. Didn't know that. Um, heart rate, calories, distance, pace, steps, recovery. So a lot of the, the stats on this watch I'm not going to have until I've run on it for a week because obviously it starts to learn your stats and stuff. Um, fatigue, running performance, um, and that whole shebang. So this is really exciting. Um, the really nice watch. It's a little bit smaller than I was expecting, but I don't know what I was expecting. It's basically the same size um, as my Garmin. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for, uh, to Koros for sending me this watch, and I'll be reviewing it at some point once I've had a proper good use of it. Um, so yeah, that will be the end of today's video. Um, so I'll cut back to, to previous Cole who did the outro, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. So um, thank you guys for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, share with your running buddies. It's free for you and it means a lot to me. And I'll catch you on the start line of the Brighton Half Marathon. Peace.